Hey, hey everybody. So if you've followed me for a while on another platform like uh, Facebook or Instagram, you'd know that almost every single bowl that I turn is grain to finish thickness. That is my much preferred method. Uh, I just like the organic nature of the finished product, but they're not for everybody. Um, if you see me turning a twice turn bowl or a rough out for a twice turn bowl, generally it's because I sell them other wood turners. Um, you know, that said, occasionally I will get a customer request for a twice turn piece. Usually it's a bigger request. Um, I got a, well, I have three requests for uh, a large, large sinks out of wood right now. Um, so I thought it would be a really good opportunity to show you how I handle mounting a roughed out dry bowl blank back to the lathe to return it properly and safely. Um, so I'll just show you the little jig that I have that works really great. It's very simple. So this is the one that I use. Um, this one's 19 inches in diameter. Um, I figured that my lathe has a 25 inch swing. I, I never turn a twice turn piece that's anywhere near that. These sinks that I have to make are 18. Um, so this is kind of a perfect size. If you have a smaller lathe, uh, you're obviously not going to be able to fit a 19. Um, you know, and it's like if you have a 16 inch swing lathe, maybe make one of these that's 15 and a half. If you do mostly bigger stuff, you could also make a smaller one to handle the smaller bowls. You know, a smaller bowl obviously is not going to fit uh, edges on this. So, so really this is just a simple plywood disc, three quarter inch ply, uh, just construction grade plywood. Uh, little circles here or semicircles that are cut and then this material is just some scraps from an old doormat it's like a you know quarter inch thick rubberized doormat um, you could probably use kitchen liner or something that's rubberized that isn't too spongy and isn't going to give uh, very much so and you know it just has a, it just has a big face plate on the back um, th I leave it for me, because I don't do this a whole lot, and I don't, not that I use a faceplate a lot anymore, but occasionally it's nice to have. Um, I'll unscrew this, the holes all line back up again, and it's fine. Um, but you wanna use a faceplate that's a reasonably large size so that it's giving this plate enough support so it's not flexing. Um, so anyhow, that said, I will show you how I use it on the lathe. Just like anything, mount the faceplate. Set my tail stuff in. And then hopefully you can see this. So when you drive a bowl blank, you know, you end up with the high spot where, you know, just below where the pip is. So if this was a a tree, you know, there would be this, and then above it would be another half, and the pith would be in the center here. That's why most people orient their bowl blanks, so the pith is up at the top, and the outside of the tree would be about where the tenon is. So you want to line those high spots up with the high spot, or the, uh, the lack of high spots, sorry, <laughs> on this plate. And then you just simply bring in the tailstock, tighten everything down, and I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> Let's try this. There we go. That's better centered. Now as I tighten this down, it's pushing the outside of this blank against the rubber. And the center here, that's the high spot, is left unsupported. So it's not going to hit something. It won't cause any wobble. So this will allow you to have a nice stable base so that you can true up this tenon, turn the outside of the bowl, and then you can flip it around and turn the inside. Um, 
for me personally, I'm impatient when it comes to doing twice turn pieces. So what I generally do is I will take, I'll take this tenon down as small as I would actually want it uh, on the finished piece, return the entire outside of the bowl, and then flip it around, put this in your four jog chuck, turn the inside. Once it's all turned, I would go back. Generally, I do things in batches to save time, but if you're just doing one, you know, do the sanding afterwards. So that said, I will. So I'm just gonna take my tenon size that I need to make onto my dividers. Generally, I just flatten this face a little bit first. So at this point, we have a perfectly sized and trued up tenon. I would, at this point, just simply turn the outside of the bowl and then flip it around, turn the inside and do my sanding. And it's a really, really easy way to hold a bowl blank nice and secure where it's not gonna wobble. And uh, yeah, anyhow everybody, I hope that helps. And until next time, Hope you're all doing well. So yeah, at this point, we have a beautifully sized, perfectly sized tenon. It's trued up, perfect angle on it to connect. At this point, I would turn the light back on, turn the old outside of this bowl, flip it around, turn the inside, and then sand it. So. Hope this helps everybody. This is a, a super simple jig to make uh, that makes this process safer and simple. Um, I see too many people, you know, just taking, you know, using a chuck and simply using it as a jam chuck and then shoving the bowl blank into it. And you end up with something that's not super secure. It's not necessarily dangerous, but it's gonna get wobbled. It's gonna make it hard to get a clean finish off the cut or off the gouge. You're just better off building something like this for yourself. Um, like I said, the, the size of it is gonna depend on the size of your lathe and the size of the pieces you need to turn. Uh, for most people, you know, one of these that's big and one that's pretty small is probably all you'll need. So anyhow, everybody, I hope that helps. Until next time, hope you have a good one. Take care.